All right, how about this? 250 likes on this video, and I'll make another one giving you my thoughts on Dan the Clown Mullins' performance at this year's Media Days. But good morning, it's Uncle Lou here. Yeah, that's right, it's me, Uncle Lou. Live for you on YouTube today. Yeah, thanks for watching in that, though. Really appreciate it. SEC Media Day is underway, and, uh, you know, today was Kirby's turn to do his song and dance. And what we all know the phrase coach speak, right? Well, Media Day is, is the epitome of coach speak. I mean, if you're watching any of these coaching interviews hoping to really find anything out, well, God bless you. You're wasting your time. At least sometimes during the season in a post-game press conference when emotions can be high, you know, maybe you have a bad loss or maybe you have an upset win or maybe it's, a, a, you know, you win or lose on the last play of the game. Sometimes you can catch these coaches slipping and, and saying what they actually mean or, or, or letting you know how they really feel, right? Not the case during SEC media days, but Kirby's turn, he was up today. And the good news is, and honestly, this is all you really want to see uh, out of your coach at SEC media days, he didn't say anything stupid. And that's really about the best you can do at these coaches' press conferences at SEC Media Days. He talked for about 10 or 15 minutes and then took questions for about 10 or 15 minutes. Nothing really surprising, in my opinion. Uh, the two players that Kirby brought along with him on the trip, over on the offensive side, quarterback JT Daniels, no surprise there. I mean, the quarterback is the natural leader of the offense. JT Daniels is the returning starter, considered – a top five or top ten quarterback in college football, depending on which list you want to look at. And uh, a lot of expectations for him this year, right? Probably his last year in college. And let's be honest, as a Georgia fan, don't you kind of hope it's his last year? If he goes pro after this year, that probably means he had a pretty good year. Isn't that what we want? And I'll be honest, it, personally, anyway, and look, look, this is coming from somebody, uh, me, Uncle Lou, if you've been watching me for a while, I'm very hard on the quarterback position at UGA. I always have been. I'm pretty comfortable with Georgia's quarterback situation right now, even beyond JT Daniels. I think top to bottom, with the exception being, of course, Stetson Bennett, who's not going to see the field this year anyway. I'm pretty happy with Georgia's quarterback situation. Carson Beck looked good in the spring. He surprised me. that you know I, I wasn't very high on Carson Beck, but he looked really good in the spring. And if you, Oh, my God, look at Lou. Bragging about a spring game. I'm, I'm not bragging about the spring game, but that's the only opportunity we've seen to – we've had to see him play in a Georgia uniform. That's really it. I mean, he handed the ball off a couple of times last year in the fourth quarter. We looked good in the spring, and Brock Vandergriff is Brock Vandergriff. The guy's got all the potential in the world. Uh, reminds me of a more mobile version of Jacob Eason, honestly. Um if you want to know what I think about Brock Vandergriff so far, that's what I think. But anyway, I'm happy with the quarterback situation. So JT Daniels was there. He'll have an opportunity to talk to reporters too. And if he says anything interesting or whatever, I'll let you know. But as of right now, that hasn't happened. Uh, so not really surprised there. Over on the defensive side of the ball, Jordan Davis. Now, I was a little surprised at this, but I was pleasantly surprised. Jordan Davis has been one of my favorite players on this defense for the last two or three seasons. Um, I mean, the guy is a, a skyscraper. The guy's a building. He looks like a building playing nose tackle or defensive tackle, depending on where they line him up or what you want to call him. Guy's absolutely huge. Kirby said today he's, he's been as high as 380, uh, and he's been as low as 330, and he said they would prefer he be closer to 330 than 380. He didn't say what he actually is right now, but anyway. But I absolutely love Jordan Davis. I always have, and um, – Honestly, I was kind of surprised he came back. He had, he might have had the best game of any Georgia player in that Peach Bowl. I mean, he was just absolutely dominant in that Peach Bowl. And, uh, you know, I don't know what kind of uh, grade he got from the NFL in terms of what round he might have gone in. But um, I was happy to have him back. K Kirby's defense, in my opinion, is at its best when it has two things. Uh a dominant nose tackle that can eat up blocks. Go back to 2017. Uh, check that season out. And a linebacker who can benefit from that nose tackle eating up blocks. An inside linebacker. 2017, of course, was Roquan Smith. 2021, N'Kobe Dean. And that's who I thought Kirby may have brought was N'Kobe Dean. I do think N'Kobe Dean is the best player on our defense. He's an All-American. He's a, probably a top-ten draft pick next year. My, I, I think he's absolutely unbelievable. 
Uh, but he brought Jordan Davis, and I have no problem with that. He's been one of my favorite players for a long time. Long time. Majors in religion, Kirby said. But uh, I like him anyway. <laughs> type, 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 type. I'm just kidding. Uh, JT Daniels majoring in psychology and sociology, for those of you that are interested. But anyway, that's who Kirby brought along. So he talked about, you know, he ran the gamut of things. He, you know, he, he bragged about the university for five or ten minutes, you know, all the new stuff that they have, how well they handled COVID, how great, you know, Greg McGarity has been, um, and the new guy, too, uh, bragged on Ron Corson a lot, uh, their medical uh, staff director. And what a good job he did during the COVID and, and all that. And apparently they've got a brand new training facility, uh, uh, like medical facility, uh, and it's the biggest in the country. Um, so he, he bragged about all that. Talked about name, image, and likeness. Uh, Kirby seems to be in full favor of name, image, and likeness. Uh, you know, you never really know when you hear these coaches talk, but he, he appears to be in full favor of it. Um, you know, he mentioned that... Uh, Several of the players on the team have struck name, image, and likeness deals. He mentioned that several haven't. Uh, some by choice, he said. Some have chosen not to, which I thought was interesting. He was asked about recruiting and how name, image, and likeness may affect that. And Kirby seems to think that within the SEC, uh, everyone is sort of on the, a level playing field, that most of the name, image, and likeness laws that fall within the states that are in the footprint of the SEC have very similar laws, but he said if you go beyond that, there are different rules and different laws in different states. And he specifically mentioned the fact that in some states, schools are allowed to negotiate deals on behalf of the players. And in some states, schools aren't allowed to do that. He specifically mentioned that point um, when referencing the fact that he's in favor of some sort of federal law or federal regulation to even the playing field nationwide uh, amongst all the student athletes at all the universities when it comes to name, image, and likeness. That was pretty much all he said about it. Um, that was pretty much all he said about it. He says, as far as he's seen, none of the name, image, and likeness type stuff has trickled down to high school athletics or impacted recruiting in any measurable way. He also said, and this is something we've talked about a lot when it comes to name, image, and likeness, just because he hasn't noticed a difference yet doesn't mean that there won't be some kind of impact down the road. Um, you know, you don't know what you don't know. We don't really know what all the ramifications and repercussions and consequences of this name, image, and likeness deal are going to be. So uh, he, he, did, uh, he did mention that too. Uh, he talked about expectations and pressure, which really is nothing new uh, to Kirby. Um, even though he wasn't the head coach, uh, he spent a lot of time with Nick Saban, and they had you know ridiculous expectations every single year, pretty much. National title or bust um, has been the case for every Nick Saban team, really, since about 2010. They won their first one in 2009, and it's pretty much been national title or bust type pressure and expectations every year since then. Obviously, the pressure is intensified when you're the head coach, but he's been under a significant amount of pressure to win um, in his time at Georgia as well. Is it is it more pressure this year? Are there more expectations this year than last year? I don't know. I, I mean, I, I talk to people year-round, and, you know, Georgia's been one of those teams that has been mentioned uh, in, in the playoff and the national title hunt heading into every single season since 2017. So, you know. Maybe it's a little bit more this year. Maybe the expectations are a little bit more. But, you know, he said they don't, they don't really focus on that. Now, that's coach speak. Uh, it's impossible not – if you're a Georgia player, it's impossible not to know that everyone has you in the top five. I mean, come on. You know, so that was some coach speak there. But, uh, you know, and then he read a quote by uh, Thoreau. I'm probably going to get this quote wrong. But he read a quote by Thoreau that basically said um, – Success comes to those who are too busy to be looking for it. And, I, and, and when he said that, I had to stop it and listen to it again because I actually like that quote too. I think you can apply that quote to any area of your life, uh, pro professionally, personally, athletically, whatever you happen to be into. Success comes to those who are too busy to be looking for it. In other words, like Kirby said, put your nose down, go to work. Do the things you're supposed to do. 
Do the things that other people aren't doing. Do the things other people don't want to do. Run the extra lap. You know, stay after for the uh, uh, voluntary um, passing drills or whatever. Get together with your teammates. Develop that relationship. You know, stay busy. Success comes to those who are too busy to be looking for it. Anyway, that's, that's how he addressed the question about expectations and uh, pressure. He seemed relaxed, and that's saying a lot for Kirby. Kirby is wound up tighter than a – I mean, you ever, uh, you, ever tore, you ever seen the inside of a golf ball? Kirby Smart's wound up like that. I mean, it's just he's a giant ball of rubber bands that, that can't be stretched any further. Um, I mean, I love Kirby Smart to death, but the guy's a uh, – he's a heart attack waiting to happen. The guy – he might as well have stress tattooed on his forehead. But he seemed pretty calm and, and relaxed at the uh, at the SEC media days. So, you know, that was good. Talked about the transfer portal. Um, talked about the, the ups and the downs, the goods and the bad, right? You know, the transfer portal can bite you. And he mentioned, you know, the fact that Georgia lost a couple of players to the transfer portal this year, specifically two defensive backs. Uh, but then he said, you know, you can you can go out and find some stuff in the transfer portal, too. And he mentioned the two defensive backs we got in the transfer portal, the one from West Virginia and, of course, Darion Kendrick from uh, Clemson. Um, so he didn't have too much to say about the transfer portal in terms of um, its effect on college football or anything like that. He, he pretty much kept it to how it affected him and his team this offseason. You know, it hurt him uh, and – they were able to use it to mitigate that hurt. Um, you know, they they had less. They have a quota at every position of scholarship players that they want to have on the team every single year. So I don't know what let's, let's you know quarterbacks. They might it might be three. We want to have three scholarship quarterbacks every year. They call that the quota for each position. And he said, well, you know, when we lost two players early to the NFL. And then two, uh, two defensive backs early to the NFL, and then two defensive backs to the transfer portal. That put us under our quota in terms of scholarships at the defensive back position. So, of course, uh, we know now he went out and addressed that through the transfer portal with uh, Smith and Kendrick from West Virginia and Clemson, and seems pretty happy with what he got. Of course, he was asked about Eric Gilbert, uh, and I thought this was kind of interesting. Now, if this is true, okay. If it's not, okay. Again, coach speak, you, you know. I, I don't believe much of anything a coach tells me um, unless I have some other way of verifying it. But uh, he was asked about Eric Gilbert and how that all came about. And he said, you know, we uh, we recruited Eric Gilbert um, out of high school, didn't get him with LSU. Um, but uh, when he announced he was leaving LSU, basically Kirby said, we called him and said, you know, if you're interested, we'd like to have you. And Kirby said they pretty much left it at that. They didn't hound him. They didn't pursue him. They didn't, you know, they weren't they weren't going to see him every day. They, they pretty much just let him know, we want you. And if you want to be here, we'd love to have you and let us know. And they pretty much left it at that, according to Kirby. And we all know, uh, we all know what he decided. Uh, Eric Gilbert, he decided to go, uh, go ahead and come to UGA. So um, that's it on that. Well, Will Muschamp, well, a couple of coaching type stuff. He talked about Will Muschamp, who, of course, is at Georgia now. He talked about Shane Beamer, who's the head coach at South Carolina now and used to work for Kirby. And he talked about Mike Bobo, who's the offensive coordinator at Auburn now, who uh, Kirby basically grew up with, then played football with and roomed with at UGA, and has since been lifelong friends with. So we'll start with the uh, Will Muschamp thing. Brings Will Muschamp in. He was asked about that. Said, you know, it's going great. It's nice to have him there. He's a, he's a great defensive mind, blah, blah, blah. Exactly what you would expect him to say. But then he specifically mentioned Will Muschamp in the Darion Kendrick uh, recruitment. <clears throat> he said that, uh, Kirby said, you know, obviously we recruited Darion out of high school here at UGA. We didn't get him. But Will Muschamp also recruited Darion out of high school. So Darion Kendrick, uh, uh, Will Muschamp had a, had a, had a relationship with Darion Kendrick already. Um, and Kirby made it seem as though Will Muschamp was very instrumental 
in kind of getting Darion Kendrick to, to choose UGA when he announced he was transferring from Clemson or whatever happened there. So <clears throat> I thought that was interesting. Shane Beamer at South Carolina, you know, they asked him, oh, he used to work for you. What do you think about that? And blah, blah, blah. And he said, well, whatever, you know, when he was here, whatever position group he was in charge of, he put 100% into it and I never had to worry about that. Basically, you know, just blowing smoke. Very complimentary. Um, nothing, nothing exciting. It, you know, he said what you would expect a coach to say. Oh, I'm happy for him. I'm sure he'll do great. And the same thing really with Mike Bobo. He obviously had more to say about Mike Bobo because they've been friends since they were 10, 11 years old. I mean, both their dads were high school football coaches at rival schools. They, you know, so they had that when they were growing up. Then they both went to UGA. Uh, they lived together at UGA, and they've been friends in the coaching world for the last 25, 30 years since then. So he had a lot to say about Mike Bobo. I respect him as a coach. I respect him as a person. He's a great offensive mind. You know, blah, blah, blah. Auburn's getting a good one. He'll find a way to use Demetrius Robertson, which they asked him about D-Rob, too, who's another player we lost to the portal. Um, you know, when asked about D-Rob's skill set specifically and what he thought he could bring to Auburn, really all Kirby had to say was that he's fast, uh, which we all knew that. And the problem is, <laughs> can't catch, uh, can't get open, and can't beat man coverage, uh, or press man coverage anyway. But uh, anyway, so that was it. Uh... If you want to watch it, I mean, just it's, it's all over YouTube. Just Google Kirby Smart SEC Media Days if you want to watch the 25-minute press conference. It's boring as hell. But uh, that's that. 250 likes on this video. And I'll tell you what Dan Mullen had to say. Oh, good God. The clown of the SEC. Have a good morning.